Welcome to this Bitcoin for Beginners series. In this video, we will answer the age-old question, what is Bitcoin? I will give you a brief overview of what Bitcoin is and the problems that it solves, and we will dive deeper into these different aspects in the next videos. So, Bitcoin is a digital currency that anyone in the world can use to send and receive money between each other. More importantly, Bitcoin is different from other monies as it is decentralized, open, and immutable. In order to understand these features, let's first talk about money. What is money exactly? Money represents value. We can use money to exchange for goods and services. Throughout history, people have used many things as money. Stones, salt, shells, and of course gold. These items are used as money because they're easy to recognize, interchangeable, long-lasting, and scarce. Now, the last property, scarcity, is very important. Money not only needs to be convenient to use, but also has to be limited in quantity so that it holds value over time. Out of all these items, gold has the best properties to be used as money. It is practically indestructible and it's very difficult to be mined from the earth. By contrast, something like stone can be destroyed and can easily be mined in large quantities. Therefore, people trust that their gold will last for a long time and will remain desirable. So they hold on to their gold to represent their wealth. Humans have used gold as a globally accepted form of money for thousands of years. The downside to gold is that it is hard to carry and cannot be easily divided. So then some people invented paper money. These paper notes are much more convenient. You can easily use them to trade. And they can be used to redeem gold at a bank. At this stage, because the paper still represented gold, people trusted that their paper also had value. Because it was so convenient, everyone started using paper money, and they even stopped bothering to redeem for their gold. So this government-controlled system became the norm. However, this started to create a problem. People also had to trust that their government and banks had enough gold for all the paper. Then one day, the government said, let's forget about gold and just trade paper instead. By this point, people had forgotten that their money needed to be scarce in order to have value. And that's how the government convinced everyone that their promise alone is enough to give paper value. This was the birth of fiat money. These include the dollar, the euro, yuan, and most modern currencies. Although convenient, fiat currencies have two big problems. First, they are controlled by a central authority. The authority decides who can use the money and how much fees they have to pay entirely based on their own discretion. And users of the fiat money have no choice but to accept them. Secondly, and this is the major problem, is that fiat money is not limited in quantity. Because there's no commodity backing fiat money, the government or central bank can create as much new paper money as they want. This causes inflation, which is the effect of money decreasing in value when more money is being created. For example, in the 1960s, a McDonald's burger costs 15 cents. The same burger costs $1 today. The burger has not increased in value, but instead it's the dollar that has decreased in value because there's so much more dollar out there. We have seen time after time during crises, such as the 2008 financial crisis and the 2020 pandemic, that central banks will issue extreme amounts of new paper money. However, the majority of these newly created money will go to the large corporations and banks to solve their problems. While the public will only receive a small portion of this money, and it is absolutely shadowed by the large depreciation of their savings. Enter Bitcoin, a digital currency that solves these problems. How does it do it? First, Bitcoin is not controlled by a central authority. It is decentralized. All of Bitcoin's decisions are made by its users. A majority of Bitcoin's users have to agree in order to make any changes to Bitcoin, such as to issue extra new Bitcoins. Bitcoin is also powered entirely by its users, and anyone can participate in running Bitcoin. When a user sends Bitcoin to someone else, everyone's computer works together to secure this transaction. They also cross-check each other to make sure that nobody is lying about the transaction in order to benefit themselves. This is the essence of Bitcoin mining, and we will go more in-depth in another video. Secondly, Bitcoin is completely open. Anyone with an internet connection can use Bitcoin. 
There are no requirements set by any authority. All you need is to download the Bitcoin software, which can run on any device. Bitcoin is also completely transparent. Unlike a bank, which only allows you to view your own accounts, Bitcoin allows everyone to view everyone else's accounts. You can see exactly how much money everyone owns and how much they are sending to each other. This allows its users to verify that nobody is creating extra Bitcoins or spending Bitcoins that they do not have. Lastly, Bitcoin is immutable. Just like how gold is practically indestructible, Bitcoin is also indestructible. All of Bitcoin's data are duplicated in over 10,000 computers around the world. You and I can also download the Bitcoin software, sync with the other 10,000 computers, and be a part of keeping Bitcoin alive. Lastly, Bitcoin transactions are practically impossible to change. The mining process secures Bitcoin and makes any attempts to change old transactions economically infeasible. The attacker will have to spend much more money than they can potentially gain. Alright, this is a simplified explanation of what Bitcoin is and the problems that it aims to solve. In the next video, we will dive deeper into how Bitcoin works. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more.